So anybody else? Any other like just other non-technical questions like that, Toby? Um, without identifying, I know that there's people in this room that are interested in playing professionally on some level. Sure. Can you, um, in a nutshell, kind of explain how you went from being just a gainful high school kid playing drums to being where you're doing what you're doing now? Yeah, I, I definitely. And I mean, it kind of goes back to the very early part of the clinic when I said, I, 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 you know, and any of the guys that are my buddies, you know, that can say this is going to know Chris, Jeff, you guys can tell when you can test her. You don't really control any of that. You know, things come and they go. You just hopefully put yourself in enough places that, and the key thing, and this is a tough one for me because anybody you can see hear me with me talking, you know, I can, you know, I, I've got my positives and I've got my negatives, and I can really be abrasive in my own because I'm so, you know, I'm so impatient and anxious. And half the battle is relationships in music. Before, if you really care and you do your homework and you're a nice person, people will find you. If you put yourself out there, I mean, you can't sit in the house and hide out. But you know, if you're willing to go out and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, what do you want to do? And to be very flexible with people's music. You know, like I said earlier, uh, you know, probably for me to get started, so I don't go web on tangent line, is I, I was lucky to get hooked up with Disney. I was in Gainesville High Band, you know, doing that, and Martha Stark, the, you know, Rest of Souls, was the band director at the time, phenomenal teacher, and she really inspired me to, to delve into other things, you know, and I was, I, I didn't really anticipate, I just always thought I'd just kind of play, you know, play for fun, and hoped I would, and it wasn't until I was maybe a junior in high school, and my drum instructor was a, a substitute musician out at Disney as well, and as a, as a college student here, and somehow I lucked out and got to go to one of their, the Disney Christmas auditions for student musicians, and they liked me. And I mean, honestly, I think that half the way I got into that was because I listened to the other musicians, and when I went in and auditioned, I wasn't trying to show them how amazing I thought I was. I really just tried to go, okay, well, what does he want me to do? And when they told me, I did. I know that sounds really simple, but you'd be amazed how many people don't do that, because we all come with all of our baggage of what we want. You know, Haven't you heard my amazing double bass jobs? And then they don't care. <laughs> you know, nobody's <laughs> interested. They're like, they need you to play oom skoom tka oom skoom tka and dance around and smile. You know, and that's, I mean, that's a big, big part of it. This is all cool. This is a small part of being in any walk of life. I'm every professional in here, I'm sure everybody in, uh, if you're nursing, so much of your technical know-how is ha half the battle of your integrated, your ability to work with others and to work as part of a team and, and see goals. That's why I love Drumline. I'm a huge fan of Drumline because it takes people from really disparate backgrounds, throws you together, and you've got to make something cool. And you've got to, and you really got to work for an exacting uniformity. It's not to say you lose your individuality. You just kind of put your individuality over here in a little box and let's, let's do something cool together. Sub I always call it subjugating the ego. You know, when I play for people, that's definitely it. So again, as far as the getting into that, the professional thing, Disney was a great stepping off point for me because I got to meet people who had worked every walk of life. I mean, now you go down there still to this day, the, when you see a horn player or somebody in the Magic King or something, most of those players have played for anybody from Woody Herman and some of these great big bands that are in the past to Wayne Newton, Vegas shows, Clint Holmes out, you know, I'm talking like in Vegas or or they've, you know, they've been phenomenal teachers. Many of them have doctorates in music, second masters in music. You know, they're really, really well educated. So I always kind of joke that I went to the school, of, I went to the University of Disney before I ever went to the University of Florida. I mean, I, you know, and I kind of jumped around. I and, and I had a very good lesson in life too. I, I had worked out there as a student musician, went to Santa Fe for a while, and then got offered a position. That they offered me a full time job. I got, I, I had an audition. I went to, I got called the audition and won an audition. And so like at 19, I was in a full time five day a week. You know. 40-hour week job out at Epcot Center in a van, playing all the time. You know, you know, bless my mom, she was cool enough to say, you know, Thomas, school's always there. You know, just do, if, you know, if you're working, you're doing what you love, do it. You know, that's, that's that kind of support, you know, you can't say enough about. And so I, I got in it, but you know what? After eight months, Disney had a, a big cross-the-board cutback in all their bands. They fired like 60 musicians. Guess who? <laughs> my band got fired. I came back from vacation and found out, guess what? You get four weeks. These days they don't even give you that. They come in with security and escort you off property. <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm not kidding either. That's there's that's the part of being the professional musician no one talks about. You know, it's like there's the glamour of like being on the stage and on a tour bus or whatever, but there's a whole bunch of, you know, just like any other job, man, you know, you're working for somebody, you know. It's the Bob Bob Dylan song, you know, has got to serve, you know, someone on your back. But so that's Disney was kind of my stepping off point. Then I went back to school. I went back to the University of North Florida and I thought I'd be a jazz performance manager, and I did that for about a year, and then went and worked on cruise ships. I played on a ship out in Hawaii, and uh, did that for like six months, and you know, and then got called to come back to Disney, worked there for a couple more years, and about that time, bugs started itching me. I'm like, man, I've never been like in a band, dude. I'm gonna go on the road, you know, be a star. So I went through that process at about you know 21, 22, and and played all over the U.S. and I was playing mostly bars five nights a week, and I can tell you honestly, I got about a year into it and went, what am I doing with my life? Because I, 
my days would be kind of like, I really, it made me get creative about education. I probably did more reading and made myself start delving into things. This is kind of pre-computers for you, you know, it's still like not early 90s. So you didn't have the beauty of surfing the web all day, learning things and feeling all, you know. I just was like stuck in, you know, Fayetteville, North Carolina for five days, you know. And I mean, nothing gets Fayetteville, but man, just not that much going on. Gainesville's a pretty cool town to grow up in. Fayetteville, not really, not so much. But that, that said, um, I, you know, that really kind of motivated me. It's like at that point I started thinking, man, I got, I've got to get more education. I've got to have other alternatives. And it goes back to what every parent tells their kid. You know, you've got to make sure you don't close yourself off. Great. You know, any, you know, any good parenting, they're always going to say, you know, do follow your dreams and all, but just make sure you, you know, play in. You got to play kind of within society too. Society's got certain things, man. You're not going to have, you're not going to have shelter if you don't, you know, get out and try and work every day. And so that was kind of that really hit me on the head. And about that time, I mean, when I came back got into off the road thing, I started to do a lot more freelancing in Orlando and working with players and I just I thought, man, the best thing I do is cast a wide net. That meaning I did everything from play at Universal and like a street brass band to still subbing at Disney World to teaching lessons. That's when I first started to privately teach because I thought, man, that's pretty cool. It's the way to give back. It's, you make a living from it and it's fun. You get this really rewarding. And so I started to do that and I just got lucky and you know in a couple places that somebody you know, knew me. I was out so much playing that people were like, man, you know, tell me how to come to this audition. There's this new uh, team group, man. There was vocal group. What was the Backstreet Boys? You know, so I got hired. So I became the Backstreet Boys first drummer. So I mean, I, you know, and anybody again who knows me though too, classic thing about being in this business, I wasn't the Backstreet Boys guy when they were touring arenas. I'm very good at being like real close. I'm always that guy that's like, I'm like Pete Best from the Beatles, you know, the guy that's, you know, oh yeah, almost there. If I'm there like a day later, you know, and but I, I don't say that to a minty thing. I've been blessed, man. I've gotten to do some cool stuff. I'm just saying that you just got to know. Um, somebody said that. What's that definition of failure? You know, it's our, our definition of success is when you get knocked down, you know, 10 times getting up 11. You know, I mean, it's really the truth. I mean, you do. I mean, you just got to keep getting up. I mean, you know, you've got one life to live as far as I know, you know, at this point. I actually said something. what it is that, or if you can hang out and figure out what it is that they wanted from whoever's being brought in. Yeah, to replace The bigger picture is if you're rejected for something, it doesn't hurt to ask why you know, and what, uh, you know, and, and tell them to be honest with you. And then if they tell you what it is that, you know, well, if you didn't do this quite right or you didn't have this quality that you were looking for, then go work on that quality. Don't walk away from a rejecting process and get discouraged. Oh, no, you know, that's, that's a big thing. You and know, I know, I mean, Chris... So he, you know, <laughs> so he, just, he won't go away. You know, that's, why, you know, that's the real answer. <laughs> no, and that's, and that's true because you guys got to understand the reason I point out people like Jeff and Chris is, you know, and again, it's like anybody looks at what Tobin has done to build this, to build studio percussion. You know, I, mean, he, I said it earlier, I'll say it again. Tobin literally went, to, it, literally, I, I looked it down one time. I had this list of all these things I'd hoped to do around here. It's like gone and done all. You know, I talked about it for 10 years. Okay, you know, that's a thing, man. That's action, and that's it's that's just as much the music business. Every every you know, every facet of that, no matter what you're doing, whether it's playing like that, and that's like Chris is because Chris what or you've been product specialist with and for line six and fender, he's toured and opened for like so if you even know the Dixie Greg, Steve Morris, he's he had his own band with a record deal, it's you Capricorn, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, and he did that how old were you when you had your deal? Which drum is your snare drum? Mm -hmm. Which drum is your tom tom? Your high tom tom? Sure. Which one's your low tom tom? Where's your, where's your bass drum? 